Good day, fellow investors. Now, Warren Buffett is famous for his quotes. And there are many, many quotes and there are great quotes, especially for creating a mental investing mindset. However, not all those quotes should be taken for granted. And in this video, we'll discuss three quotes that can be considered lies. Because Warren says one thing, but does the other thing. So let's immediately start with the first quote. Buy businesses that an idiot can run because sooner or later an idiot will run them. So Buffett has been constantly saying that for 50 years now. But there is a big difference between what Warren says and what he does. Let's first see what is an easy, simple business, great business at a great valuation that Warren bought in 1972. In 1972 Warren bought sees candy for 25 million, which is a very, very low price when you think that since then, so in the, what we are, 45 years, sees candy earned 1.9 billion in pre-tax earnings. So he paid 25 million for 1.9 billion in pre-tax earnings. That's an excellent return. Sees candy, it's a box of chocolate, so very simple business, an idiot can run it, and there is the brand, so great investment. However, Seas Candy is just a small part of Berkshire. If you look a bit more, dig deeper, you will see that many, many investments are complicated ones and no idiot can run those businesses. One example is Berkshire's reinsurance business. In every letter to shareholders and annual report, Buffett spends a ton of words to praise Ajit Jain, which is the CEO of Berkshire Reinsurance. If we look at this part from Warren Buffett's letter to shareholders, we can see that he's saying how he has some terrific managers running disciplined operations that possess heart to replicate business models. When he describes reinsurance, he, said, he says that Ajit insures risks that no one else has the desire or capital to take on. No one else. So this is really not something an idiot can do. His operations, Ajit's, combines capacity, speed, decisiveness, and most important, brains, in a manner unique in the insurer's business. So this is clear how no idiot can run Berkshire reinsurance. It has to be a genius. So one thing he says, the other he does. Another example are Buffett's deals with 3G's Paolo Lehmann. In 2013, they bought Heinz. So that was a company with very small margins. And then Buffett put in the money and the pub, his public face. And Lehman, Brazilian investor, put his knowledge and operational activity into the company. 11 of the 12 CEOs from Heinz got sacked and thousands of people lost their jobs. So, Paolo Lehmann improved operation, increased margins, increased prof profitability, and made that investment work. There are few Paolo Lehmanns in this world. So, again, he has a genius running companies, turning them around, and then he's saying that you should find businesses that an idiot can run. N no idiot can run Heinz or can do what Paolo Lehmann did. The same holds for Buffett's failed acquisition of Unilever, again, low margins, stagnating company, then they would put in Paolo Lehmann, fire all the management, that's why the management was opposed to the acquisition, and that's why the acquisition didn't go through, because the management knew their heads would roll. So they were opposed, okay, and 3G said, we are not going to do hostile takeovers. That's too complicated. Nevertheless, Paolo Lehmann is a shark and he knows his business. So Buffett simply says, okay, that's not me. Or he used to comment about the Heinz acquisition that that's simple how capitalism works. You have to fire people, you have to make things more efficient. That's true, but he leaves the dirty work to others. So it's not really that idiots can run his investments. Very, very smart people, dedicated people run his investments. So to, the takeaway from the first quote is find companies with great, amazing management and sell them when something changes. There are no more businesses that can be run by idiots in this environment. Competition, technology, everything is moving so fast. 
you need excellent management. You need people that are capable, that know what they're doing, and that are dedicated to their business. So that's the first Warren Buffett lie. Second, let's say lie or misunderstandment is the first rule of investing, according to Buffett, is never lose money. Second rule is look again and rule number one. Okay, I say, never lose money. But I think the investment population doesn't understand really what Buffett wants to say. If we take a look at the 52-year performance of Berkshire Hathaway, you see two measures. The first column is the book value of Berkshire. And in 52 years, only two years, 2001 and 2008 have been negative. However, the market value of Berkshire's stock has had 11 negative years, the same as the S&P 500. So what Buffett wants to say with not losing money is not losing book, va book value. He doesn't care about market moves. The market will always be volatile and you have to take advantage of that. However, losing money is investing there where there is risk of permanent capital loss or inadequate returns on earnings, on fundamentals. Buffett doesn't care that much about what the market is doing. So don't think that you are not allowed to lose 10, 20% or even 50% in a year. Buffett lost 50% twice in market value. However, the book value stayed stable. So that's a difference that many don't understand. Buffett is not afraid to lose market value. He's afraid and focused on book value. A big difference. The third thing Warren Buffett does differently than what he says is that he has been saying for the past 50 years that he doesn't care what the Fed is doing and that if he would knew what the Fed will do tomorrow, that wouldn't change his investment strategy. Now, that was good for 50 years because the Fed's influence on the stock market was minimal. When there was a recession, the Fed would lower interest rates. When everything was good, interest rates would immediately shoot up. So it was a balancing mechanism that was worked well for 50, 70 years. However, since 2008, the Fed increased in its balance sheet abnormally in order to stabilize the financial world. You can see here how correlated is the S&P 500 with the Fed's balance sheet in blue. Practical perfect correlation since 2009. So it's certainly no coincidence that the stock market is up three times and Fed's balance sheet is up five times. You see here that from 2000 to 2008 the Fed's balance sheet was really growing slowly in order to keep enough money into the system. Since then it exploded. So up to 2008 it was okay not to care about what the Fed is doing. But since then, I think Buffett is watching and we have to watch what the Fed is doing and try to position ourselves to at least hedge the risks of what's going on. How is Buffett hedging himself for the risks? Well, he has 100 billion in cash. He never had so much money in cash and he's piling, piling that cash, which means he's preparing himself for something. He's preparing himself for bargains. And the bargains will come when interest rates increase. When interest rates increase, he will be helping those companies that go bankrupt, buying them with preferred shares on the cheap, so buying options on their future stock prices while getting huge returns on his money. He's waiting. He might wait another year, five years, ten years. He doesn't care. He knows that that will give the highest return on that 100 billion. Buying a company now, okay, if it's really a good one, a complicated one, like Sergio Paolo Lehman injecting his knowledge into the company, okay. Just buying something just to buy, he doesn't do that. And that's why the cash pile is huge. So to conclude, I'm still a fan of Buffett. I really admire him, but I think we should learn from what he is doing and not from what he is saying. There is a big difference between Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, his partner. Warren Buffett wants to be liked by people. Charlie Munger doesn't care what you, you or me think about him. And therefore, if you listen to Charlie, his words are much heavier and carry much more truth. Buffett wants to be liked by you and therefore he will say what you want to hear. So that's very important. 
So to learn, okay, listen to both of them, but try to follow what they are doing and what they have been doing. Not so much what they are saying, especially Buffett. I'll be doing soon a video on Charlie Munger, which is, I think, even better than Buffett because he tells the truth. And that's what you want to learn. You want to make money, not feel good about your investments. So thank you for watching. Click like if you like the content. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. Share this video with your friends if you think it can add value to them. I'm looking forward to your comments. Any other lies that Buffett is saying or anybody else that you think is saying one thing and doing the other. Share it with us. We are here to learn or to all together and create a community of investors. Thank you for watching again and I'll see you in the next video.